Today we're watching Xbox gameplay. A lot of people saw the last one where I covered a top PS4 player. Now we're taking a look at an Xbox player on Caldera because people say it's impossible to play. Obviously there's some bugs that need to be worked out and some graphical issues, but from what I've seen, there's a lot of workarounds and that's what we're gonna see in today's gameplay. We're gonna see these one-on-one -on -one engagements, these one-on-two -on -two engagements, one on three and one on four. We'll leave links to iFighter's channel down in the description. He has like a hundred followers over on Twitch. So if you wanna go check him out, the link will be near the top of the description. Cause obviously on a console, you're playing with the restricted FOV. And I think for most people, they see that as a huge disadvantage. Um, even though more often than not, it's really the frames that could be the issue. FOV can make your target bigger, it can make it smaller. There's a lot of variables that go into it. Picking up a, a couple clean heli kills right off the beginning. And you can tell it's from this season because we're talking about the, the peak looking the way it does currently. So it's like as of the game right now. So I've already got the loadout. He's gonna be rocking the XM4 and the Owen gun, which are pretty much the best two guns across the, the game modes. Um, there are some arguable like long range options, but for the close range, pretty much the Owen is the way to go. Obviously there's a type 100 that fits in, but that's a whole other video, right? So what we're looking at here is they're just trying to chase down their bounty and then get flashed. There's a little bit of teamwork. He got out of there. He, he got flashed a second time. He comes back through. He's peeking the angles and he ends up uh, taking that one out. There's a total of three guys down here. You can see his teammates pinging him. They are working as a team and team shooting. He comes out, gets a little bit of a bunny hop in there. Um, and then he's going to go ahead and push this with his team. They've already evened out the numbers. They took out three guys. So it's essentially like a four versus one uh, in that case. So he got a couple kills in the mix. Initially, obviously they stay together. This is usually a good strategy um, all the way through the match. But if you're a little bit more adventurous and you wanna work on handling 1v2 engagements or more, a lot of times the, the goal is to kind of split off a little bit so you can um, challenge yourself to take on engagements that way. Luckily they do have a UAV, so they will get a little bit of a situational awareness where enemies are and then they'll be able to move based off that intel. Um, you can see there, the, his teammates kind of in the area. There is a guy down here, and you can see that there was a down arrow on the minimap. So he's going directly for this guy, pushes in, likely doesn't have a loadout, um, so you could push him aggressively. Also, on top of that, there, there was only one dude, so I felt like it was a comfortable 1v1, knowing where they're at, just break through the door, pre-aim, and, and took the guy out. There's another guy in this building, which he should be able to take them out. They are kind of just different people split off. It looks like the guy might be a little bit lower. He peeks the edge where he thought the guy was, listening for audio, see if he sees anybody, nothing there. There's still a guy on the UAV. Looks like he could potentially be lower. There he is, he spots him, he just jumped down. Got a little bit of timing on that, almost gets demolished by that. Luckily his teammates there to help and shoot the body, I guess. His other teammates dealing with another duo, it looks like potentially. So he's gonna be able to rotate across. Obviously a hot start. We got seven kills right off the bat. And the, the, the lobby still has 101 other players in it with the with the gulag and those types of things. So they're just owning peak. Uh, peak is one of those areas where you can rack up a ridiculous number of kills. Um, if you own it and you don't end up going to the gulag right away, you can end up team stacking or body stacking. Um, I don't know if that's from his stream because I think he streams specifically from his console. The same way that we saw with the PS4 gameplay, it's directly from the Xbox account. Not having a two PC setup or none of that nonsense. Like this is just an Xbox directly from the Xbox while playing on the Xbox. So it looks like he's gonna be ditching his teammates, work towards the, the loadout potentially. Uh, maybe get a different set of perks, a high alert, ghost. Um, but since he's going to be using the vehicle to go across the land, uh, I, I probably wouldn't go with ghosts just because you make your presence aware, uh, like apparent uh, when you're coming in. So he's going to come in for that. One of the other teammates did get a bounty. What's he end up grabbing? Perks. Uh, he ends up getting tempered. Tempered is good in 1v2 situations, 1v3 or whatever, because it allows you to plate up and at least make those fights a little bit even. Seat swaps to call in a UAV and then starts rotating um, uh, through the map. Obviously this thing has these broken gun turrets on them. So if you decide to use them, that's obviously part of it. But there's a team of three in front right here that they're fighting another team up top or team of four possibly. But it looks like that he can have a chance to third party here. And you can see how he's kind of looking at taking the angles, ends up taking that guy out, misses the throwing knife, gets shot from the right, trying to get out of there, stims to get away, 
breaks the line of sight, gets the plated. Two plates will bring him up to full. Somebody uses a, what, oh, snapshot. He ends up taking that one out. Peeking, you can see the movement. And a lot of these, uh, usually console players typically play on a little bit higher FOV. Or not FOV, but sense, so they can look around a little bit uh, more aggressively. But look at how he's using his movement. Peeks where the guy is, comes through, and, and works out really well. So there's one more. Resets the gunfight. If the guy's not self-reviving, you don't need a thirst immediately. Uh, sometimes you can use that to bait the enemy. So there's still two enemies here. This guy, he takes one, and then there's the other one. He ended up going for the flank. He might get downed here. Oh, my God. This guy ha did have ghosts. He's going to die here, most likely. <laughs> the guy's trying to melee. The guy needs to reload. <laughs> I think the guy used all his bullets. He's going to die, though. The other guy was watching over it. It's all good. We go to the gulag. Got a hard start. This is just watching over the teammate. What an annoying spot to fight. So you gotta wait quite a bit for that gulag, but we are rocking with the Bren, which is kind of frustrating because it does block some of your vision right in the middle of the screen. See, he's just kind of pre-aiming it, listening for audio cues. Um, it is nice that they increase the health because then it makes the gulags a little bit more consistent. But pre-aiming is probably the way to go with something like the, the Bren. Um, just because if you get caught sprinting, you can kind of get screwed here. Oh, man, he might need to get bought back. Oh, yeah, he got gunned in there. The guy got him from behind. His teammates are going to buy him back. Unfortunate gulag. I didn't hear where the guy went, and that's the problem with the gulag. It is just a hair too big. Um, but with the, the brand, you can get caught sprinting. Teammates already bought him back, so that was pretty quick. They already had enough money. He's coming back and be able to land on the loadout over here at peak. Uh, but this will be a high loadout spot, right? Like, this guy's just watching the loadout. Oh, there's a full team. Three on top pick. They're jumping off. See, he might be able to make this play here. This is super risky. And this is one of those plays where it's kind of like a dumb play. So he got the one down. Peeks the other using the loadout as a head hit. And then he's going to swap. This guy's not selfing. The other one's got to zip up. So you got to be aware of that. Get plated. And the guy will probably try to sneak up. Um, if the teammate can't get a UAV, that would be ideal for teammate to get a UAV, but we'll see what happens. You can see he's using the standard 3X optic. I know a lot of people say that the XM4 is a lot harder to control on console um, because of the FOV difference. Uh, but I think once you get past uh, how the visual recoil impacts a gun, most of the guns are pretty straightforward. You kind of just pull down into the left, down, down, and that's it, or down into the right. Um, and I kind of explained this in my accuracy tutorial. I'll probably do a follow-up one um, and talk about how your aim can also change based off your movement stick. So you use both in combination to get as accurate as possible, whether you need to make micro or macro adjustments. Comes up up here, has the ultimate high ground. There's another one in the air. You see the chevron on top of the guy's head. He peeks it really quick, and then he's gliding back over here. And this is a guy that probably won the gulag. They're going to land back on his guns. He's going to come back. And he might be able to get this guy with like his pants down because he's not going to be fully plated. There he is on the roof. He comes through. And oh man, he couldn't get him in time. He was one shot. He probably doesn't have, I mean, who knows? I don't know if he has plate. Oh, this guy. What is the challenge? He probably thought he jumped off because he was standing still. Oh my God. So he ends up with 14 kills. The lobby started dying off pretty quick, and that normally happens by the second zone. It starts dying off pretty quickly just because now it starts to converge. If you didn't move over quick enough, some people get caught in the gas, whatever. You can see somebody's doing a recon, so that could be a hot drop. There are three people by a buy station uh, that he's going to go ahead and kind of try and get a different angle on. And that's sometimes what uh, good players are able to do, regardless of their platform, is they are able to position themselves in a way that they're going to be annoying to a team, right? They already knew where he was coming from. He gets one kill. There's a guy up top he's got to worry about. And then there's two down low in tents. So he doesn't fully commit to the open area. He's kind of doing this thing where he's like, all right, I'm going to use this tree. This is actually a different guy. He's not with that team. The guy's one shot. He should be able to get him. Got to be careful. Oh, like that. the tree is just big enough. So he does a wide jump, ends up getting the shot off. And then now you know that those two down low are not with his team. So he's going to go ahead and peek it. You need one knock. And that's essentially what's going to allow you to win a gun, like uh, win a gunfight, right? So he downs this guy. 
There's another guy coming up. It could be Gulag or on top of the hill. So he's peeking it, chasing it down. And I, I don't really see it. There he is. So he gets a couple shots. Almost on it. And then now we know that there's still uh, two to the left by the buy station. And then there's another one up front. So it looks like there are they're, they're two teams here potentially. So he's kind of in the middle of this constant third party. But he needs to get a full knock. If you're not able to get a knock, um, you're more than likely going to lose these engagements. Because then you allow him to reset. So he comes up. Takes that dude out. I think there's still two more. He, he ends up just getting good reaction on the dude. Centers it up. Takes him out. And there still should be one more guy in the area. Gets fully plated. He needs somebody to call a UAV for him. Oh, there he is. The guy's right in front. You see how he's using the cover? Snaking a little bit. Almost snaking. That wasn't a full snaking. I think it was a little bit of almost prone blocking going on. But he got this guy. Throwing knife. Nice. And that is a team wipe. So those guys are out. Up to 19 kills. And... I did talk to this guy a little bit. Obviously, there are graphical issues where maybe your reticle does disappear. But it, it happens like once every two hours or something like that. So if yours is happening more often than that, you probably got to do a full reset. Or you got to look into some troubleshooting stuff on your settings. And there's certain settings you can do to ensure that your game performs as well as it's supposed to most of the time. And then you just reset it every 90 minutes if you're going to have like a super long session so you don't run into those issues on the back end of the console. So this is a little bit dangerous, just flying around trees. Oh, but people usually try to shoot you. They're going to give away their position. Now you have the high ground. You can split off. Your teammate did go down. Your teammate's kind of baiting. You're going to come from a different angle. Weird angle. You were able to take him. He, oh, no. I think his teammate's going to clean up. He's going to be able to self-revive. All he needs is his teammate to buy time from him. He's going to tap him. Get to cover. Go ahead and plate. Reset the gunfight. There's a guy behind you, too. Stim shot. He gets away. Oh, my God. So, he got lucky. He has a stim, right? Like, that's one of the advantages. And then there's still the guy behind. So, you got to worry about your angles that you're taking. Because that guy can still see you from where they're at. Luckily, the truck might be able to cover this. He's going to call the UAV. The guy is above him now. You can see it on the UAV that there's the up arrow. So he could be on the roof. There's a full team of three pushing. He's going to go ahead and stim play it. He thought the guy was there. He's in the corner to the left here. He has the prox mine set up. He's ready to camp. He jumped out the window. He's down low. Oh, no. He's in the middle of two teams. Did the truck hit him? I think the truck hit him. Oh, my God. So now there's a team of four that they kind of bailed off. I, I think the prox mine was placed down, and these guys are going to play a little bit passively. Luckily, everyone does have to move with the zone. You still have to get some knocks here. He's got to play this with his teammate. His teammate's pushing up on the right-hand side. Um, they don't really have enough money. They got to get to a buy station, but combining their money, they could be good. You can see he's taking a different angle. He's going to get in the heli. Uh, most likely use that transport. Takes one out. Luckily, now they... Oh, he's got to get to cover. He just ego chows it. Ooh, that was close. One bullet. There'll be people that comment down below. Um, just, just, they'll say bot lobby. I wish I had these lobbies. My people shoot back. Clearly people are shooting back. Like, you're just blind to it. It's okay. Yeah, you you are those people that aren't shooting back. If you're one of those people that, like, that's what you think about. How it goes. So he's, he's, he's trying to go for a 30. There's still uh, 17 people, 16 people. His teammate just died, went to the gulag. And he has 23. So he only needs about seven more to break 30 kills, which I'm sure he goes well over that. And obviously there are some lobbies where they are slightly easier or slightly harder organically. And sometimes that sucks. But the lower your skill, the harder your lobbies will feel, regardless of how difficult your lobbies are. Which is inherently how it goes because... If you're a 1KD player and you come up against 1KD player, you're going to say, damn, my lobbies are sweaty. But if you're a 3KD player you come up against a 1, you're going to be like, damn, my lobby's full of bots. So, just how it goes. Even though 1KD players could be really good, they're just stats for tanked from early in the season, right? So now he's kind of working with his teammate. We are past that point where you don't really have a gulag. You do still have a self-revive, so you can work with that. He's got to close this distance smartly um, and find out where this guy is. Luckily, he's able to take him out. There's another one. Got the Diamati after the nerf. There's a third one peeking. Oh, the Eagle Chow. He should have died there. So he's going to be able to self. 
Hopefully that doesn't hit him. Okay, he's safe. He's at the watch over him. Oh, nice. The guy didn't hear the stim. I think the, the precision clouded that audio. So it worked out really well. Uh, so now his teammates... If you have good teammates at this point and you are going for a high kill game, this is normally when they should kind of tee up, work collaboratively, and kind of uh, bait some shots for you. Maybe soften some people up. Oh, that guy, he was looking to the left. Stim closed the distance. And normally that's what you should have. If you have good teammates that aren't selfish, they'll call in UAVs. They'll save some money to buy you back. They'll start working for you to have a really good game. And I think he probably plays with these people normally. Everyone's TTV and TikTok all the way across the board. So four more for a 30. He's coming through. Going to hit the... His teammates are going to hit the buy station or they have the money to hit the buy stations. You can see that that guy's gliding in. He might be able to get an easy kill. Easy. That guy took the balloon, I believe. They called in a... Why the heck did they call in a loadout right there? Such a weird spot. So you can see that there's like a one or two teams on the far left that are coming down the hill. There should be a guy right in front of him, which is the one he's going to take out. And then there's two teams on the right. It looks like a solo in the building. And then it looks like three people to the left that are kind of together or it could be two teams there. So that's a total of the four teams. So one just died. So it looks like a solo versus that duo on the end. And then the other teams up top started killing each other. So this is the solo or a bunch of ghosted players standing, uh, not standing still, right? So he's working the top of this. There should be a guy peeking. He's like, oh, he put down the, what? He just threw the PDS that like the zone's not even closing. <laughs> what is he doing? Way too early on that PDS. He didn't get the break there. He gets the down and he's going to catch these two in rotation. His teammates got to watch out behind him though. Damn, that heady is nasty. So he's got to back off. Watch out. He did get a couple downs, though, but he, but he needs his teammates to help finish the kills. I thought I heard another cough to the right. There it is. Nice. He got the down. Easy. 29 kills, and they still have 7 up, which means they probably have, like, a 4v4v. Okay, now it's not. So it's a 4v3, oh, 4v4. So we got the one last team. Uh, if we remember, they were on the other side of the zone, um, basically to the south. And he should be able to get a couple of these kills as his teammates uh, tee up. So th there are a lot of console, like crazy good console players, regardless if you're an Xbox or PS4, or PS5 or Xbox Series X, whatever. There's a lot. Go check this dude out. I know you guys are going to watch the end of this, but go check him out. Link in the description. He's a, over a 3.5 KD on an Xbox with 1,100 wins. Oop. He, uh, uh, oop. Oh, I couldn't even see the guy. He's, he's hiding out. Going to get to another piece of cover. Close the distance. Played up, and then he should have a good angle on this dude. He probably just grab his loadout. That'll automatically give him some plates. Yep, tempered, automatically restock that, so he didn't waste the plates. Super smart play there. There's the one there, and then he's got to get this guy rotating down. Luckily, his teammates called in that cluster, which kind of forced this guy to move. He's going to take an off angle because this guy has to run in. He should be able to catch him sprinting. And when somebody's sprinting, they're often defenseless because you can't have your gun like this and aiming down sight at the same time. So he's just going to kind of wrap up. The guy should be coming down. He should get a good, easy kill from behind somewhere. There it is. Nice little clean kill. That guy was ready for him. They threw a stun. They threw a nade back. He's going to be able to push up, pop out the Owen gun, catch him in rotation. This guy might be selfing. He did self. Nice. Got the one. Oh, that's the range where the Owen gun gets a little bit harder to control. So he takes that one out. There's one last dude. That guy wasn't selfing. He could have been baiting it, but he's going to come through, get the kill. Oh, he needs the ammo. Nice. He's getting those last clean kills. So it works out. So now it's a 4v2, but I think one was like super low health. She's going to push this aggressively. Teammates are there. The guy didn't know where he came through. GG's 34 kills on an Xbox. If you are a console demon, I'm going to do more of these over on my second channel. Tag me over on Twitter if you were on Xbox 
or PS4, PS5, and are regularly dropping 30 to 40 kills in Caldera or Rebirth Island. Appreciate all the support. Thank you for watching. As always, have a great day.